forced and I had to change my spam management solution. I started off using Maya MailGuard, which I really enjoyed using. It was great. It had a great little interface that I could just do all the management of, of spam that I needed to and, and any viruses that came in. And it, it was, it was really good. Really enjoyed using that. I had to move away from it because it wasn't compatible with uh, the latest versions of FreeBSD because they dumped PHP 7, which is fine. Software has to move on. You have to stay current. So I moved up to PHP 8, 8.3, I think I went to. Might even have been 2. Can't remember now. Irre irrelevant for this. So I had to move to Amovisd new, and I was never really happy with that because you don't really get any interface to it apart from command line tools, which is okay. I'm fairly adept at using command line tools. I could get myself around it. But going forward, that's not what I wanted to do. So let's take a look at what I've come up with now. So originally I'd, I'd planned to do another email server setup. As most people who watch my content will know, I'm, I'm very much into running a home lab and your own stuff, on-prem stuff, rather than using Gmail or Yahoo or Microsoft or whoever you, it may be that you choose, all those people that you have to pay money to. I don't want to do that. I want to do it myself and I want to be able to control every aspect of that. What I've come up with after being forced out of Maya MailGuard is this, and I've recently found out that actually quite a few organizations use this, which is really nice to know. So what I've come up with, not what I've come up with, I haven't written any of this. What I've started using is our spam D. So the real question is, why didn't I find this before? I don't know is the answer to that. From what I've seen so far, and it's been running for better part of a week and a half, two weeks, maybe less. Anyway, it's been running. It seems extremely fast. I don't even notice it's running. When I'm watching my mail logs, it comes in, it's delivered. I don't see any performance hit. And the features, and the features that are included is just, well, it's very expandable. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So let's have a, a quick look at what it is that you get with this. So firstly, we need to install it. And that's a simple package install rspamd. And that will install it. I've already got it installed, obviously. Now, while I was doing some research for setting up a, a mail server again, I'd come across the guy who originally set up the Maya Mail Guard tutorial, which is Janky J Third. And I've got to say, this guy knows what he's talking about. He actually gave me quite a lot of support when, when I was running Maya Mail Guard. And officially, the support for Maya Mail Guard ended with PHP 6. But Janky J Third and a few others done a lot of work in getting it working for PHP 7. So I found his new guide and I thought I'd go through it and have a look at what was new. And as I was scrolling down, I saw the MariaDB, which I'm, I'm not using. I'm, I'm just using MySQL. And I got a bit further down and I came to our SpamD and I thought, let's have a look at that. And it looked a little bit daunting at first, but I went through it and it all worked perfectly. Exactly how this tutorial said it would. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to this particular um, guide because it is just... The whole thing is, is just... It works. He has got a great way of writing tutorials and how-tos, and, and this one is no different. He's got a few others that I'm going to come back to looking at as well, because he's got fail to ban there with PS, which I want to look at at some point, even though I've already done that on my own on my own server. So we'll we'll take a look at that in a bit in a, in a coming video. But yeah, so th there's hardly any overhead to this. It's running Redis as its back end and it's using a Milter to interface with Postfix. And like I say, it just works. I will say, don't forget to allow the ports through your firewall. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I found that out quite quickly. <laughs> so once I'd got that, I'd got all my files here and I quickly found out 
that there are a lot of modules that can be added as well, which is great. So if you want to block AWS emails or you want to use RBLs or anything like that, gray listing, external relays, you can even write your own plugins for it, your own modules. And that, to me, makes it way more usable than anything I've used before. You can even import Spam Assassin rules by using the Spam Assassin plugin, which is just crazy that one solution would be able to use another solution. Yeah, j that just blew my mind. I'm not using it because, as it turns out, the rules in our Spam D are written completely differently and the scoring is completely different. So whereas you would get a, a score of, say, plus five on Spam Assassin, that's not very high. You probably wouldn't mark that as spam. That's very high in our Spam D. And you probably would mark that spam as an example. So I went through and looked at all these files and I enabled the modules that I wanted. So we had uh, DMARC, SPF, DKIM, the whole stuff that you would want. I added in my antivirus and I just tailored my actions to how I would want them. So anything that gets a score of 5.01 has its subject rewritten with spam in front. Headers are always added at five and it's gray listed at 4.5 and rejected at 50. Now, that's quite high. I've not had anything rejected since I initially set it up with a, a lower reject of, I think I had 15 and it rejected quite a few. So yeah, very, very impressed with this. So there's my antivirus. It's using Clam AV. I'm very happy with this, very happy with this. And the other good thing about it is it gives you a web interface. And it's quite a thorough web interface. It gives you uh, statistics over here, tells you how many emails it's learned. Yeah, that's quite a lot of emails, 40, 41,000 since I started it. That's just learn, no, that's not how many it's processed. So it's processed 2.14. You get nice throughput graph and you get your configuration files. And again, so you got your configuration files here. Whoosh. You can edit it through this. Now you can't edit all of them for some reason. And I'm assuming that that's permissions thing, which is fine. I'll, I'll look at that another time. So I can just, I can confer, uh, compare these to these. It, it's fine. Whoosh. Don't know what all that's about. So yeah. And then you've got the symbols. Now this is very powerful. So I was finding that I was still getting some emails coming through and they were almost always HTML emails. So I just messaged the score. Don't, 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 don't. Massaged the score that it would get and it stopped them. So you can do this. You can just go through these, all through the symbols and rules and tailor it. And there is a lot of them. So there you go. There's your SPFs, your DKIMs, your DMARCs. You can massage the scores. You can change it to suit your needs. And then you can actually, if anything gets marked as a false positive or a false negative, you can paste it in and you can you can sort out the learning or you can do it from a command line but it's not recommended and then you've got your test selectors so you can paste in it the, the message source and you can see what selectors are on it and then you've got your history and it'll tell you exactly what happens to from and what action was taken and it'll give you all the all the symbols that marked it as as what i am very very impressed with this and as it turns out for good reason I'm not the only person using this. It, it's used by a lot of big companies. It's in actual fact used by FreeBSD, the FreeBSD project, or at least it was. I don't know if it still is. So I will keep tailoring this until I get it pretty much spot on for me. But for now, I just wanted to share this with you. It's pretty much exactly what I wanted. And I can keep tailoring it. And I will keep tailoring it and it will probably take me a while, but that's absolutely fine. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what anti-spam and antivirus solutions you guys are using if you're running your own uh, mail server. I would love to know, because I'm very chuffed with myself for, for using this. I don't know why. <laughs> I just am. I like it. I like it a lot. So yeah, just a, a, just a quick video for this. If you want me to, to go through the whole setup and how it's done and integrated into Postfix, drop me a comment and let me know. I'm quite happy to do that. And uh, maybe I'll even do a, a, a tutorial on the whole mail server setup with 
Postfix, RSpamD, Dubcot, Clam AV, what's the other one? Oh, and Civ C, or Dubcot Pigeonhole as it's called. Let me know. I'm, I'm, I might try and do that and, and release it in parts because that would be a quite a long video, I think. I did try starting it, but as I was going through, I found this and I was like, no, stop, stop. Anyway, don't forget the uh, Discord server link down below and I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.